1989, it was September of 89, I believe, uh, a photographer in Minneapolis that I knew, who knew of my interest in historical processes, called me up and said he had been at a garage sale, and there were these glass plate negatives, and there were a whole bunch of them and a bunch of prints, and he knows that I was interested in that history stuff, so why don't I go check it out? So the next day I went. I walked into this garage and there were these tables of this person's household belongings. And on the far table was this collection of eight wooden boxes, a shoe box full of papers and whatnot, a couple of other boxes of prints, silver prints, albumen prints. There was one cyanotype and I recognized it as being Jerusalem and I started investigating or inspecting the plates and I recognized the Dome of the Rock and I, well, I recognized many of the spots. And I knew it was collodion. I knew it was wet plate collodion, which is different than dry plate. And I assumed they were copy necks. And once I had the time to print some of them and saw the dates and saw that there was a name scratched into it, then I did some investigating and I eventually called the Harvard Semitic Museum and uh, got a very interesting response <laughs> at the other end of the phone line. Uh, for Mary Ellen Taylor. We got a telephone call, and a young man called us from Minnesota. And my my archivist, my photographic archivist, who herself had lived for years in the Middle East, got the phone call as I was otherwise occupied, and Mr. John Barnier, who, as it turned out later, was an expert on early photographic techniques from the 19th century, said, look, I have never been to the Middle East. I've never been to Jerusalem, but I have found some extraordinary glass plate negatives and I think it's Jerusalem, and the dates are awfully early, from the 1850s, and the initials of the, of the photographer who signed them are, are M, J, D. And Mary Ellen identified that these were the long lost photographs of Mendel John Dennis and that they had surfaced in Minnesota was extraordinary. I realized the weight of it significantly. It, it weighed on me for a long time. In fact, I immediately went out and bought a $700 safe to put in my dark room uh, to make the prints. So that's where the collection was. And then I never walked more than eight or nine feet from the safe to printing the whole time that I owned it after I had, had discovered what exactly it was. And everything ended up in Minneapolis. <laughs> how, how that happened <laughs> and how I am the one to come across them is a little unnerving, but it's, um, and it, it's still quite a mystery to me that I'd like to investigate. How did this treasure come to Minnesota? We didn't know. And we were interviewed by, by National Public Radio. And didn't we, after that program, get a phone call? And the phone call was from a giant young man. And he said to National Public Radio, or specifically to Minnesota Public Radio, are you really interested in who put those glass plates in the tag sale? And they said, oh yes we are, and particularly Father Gavin, Dr. Gavin at Harvard would be very interested. He said, well I did. They said, my goodness, that's fantastic. Now who are you? Now I have to explain to you, I was calling that tag sale place 
and thought there was something the matter with them because I would say, you know those beautiful photographs, those negatives of Jerusalem. I was wondering, and they would say, New Jersey. No, 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 they're of Jerusalem. I just was wondering, how did you get them? Poland. No, no, I was wondering, from whom did you get them? Poland, I tell you. <laughs> well, the gentleman on the telephone said, when they asked at Minnesota Public Radio, now, what is your name? He said, Poland, Bill Poland. <laughs> and where did you find these photographs? Well, I found them in my grandmother's attic. And where was that? In Summit, New Jersey. And thereby, the mystery began to break. And what we had discovered was that Mr. Dennis had emigrated to the United States during the Civil War in the 1860s. His daughter built this home in Summit, New Jersey, and it was her granddaughter who became ill, and young Mr. William Poland went to try and find an appropriate nursing home for his grandmother and clean up his grandmother's house and found those treasures in the attic. And not finding a worthy place to leave them in New Jersey, he brought grandmother and photographs to Minnesota, but without any idea that these had been made by his ancestor or that his ancestor had come from Jerusalem.